artist Lillian Gray and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful contemporary giraffe out of air dry clay. I love using Dollar's air dry clay. It is by far the most malleable and easiest to work with and it's very affordable. So I'm using Dollar's air dry clay and I've got a set of pottery tools that includes a little sponge and a little tools just to refine your giraffe. You can shuffle down below, just click on the link in the description. For this lesson, you will also need newspaper print, tape, a roller, two dowel sticks, and a dinner plate. Step one is to cut your clay into smaller pieces that are easier to work with. First thing you need to do is open your pack of clay. I have divided my clay into quarters, so it's just easier for my hands to really wedge it. Use your clay tension wire from your pottery set to split your clay into four pieces. After you have split the clay into four, we can move on to step two, which is to wedge your clay. Think of it as dough that you are pressing to make bread. Okay, so it's like kneading the clay um, and just getting it nice and soft. I haven't added any water to this because we do not want a mud bath. So this is just the consistency of the clay coming straight from the back. The enemy of clay is air. So when you are wedging, you do not want to poke your fingers into the clay and create air bubbles. That will make your clay crack once it's drying. So you do not want to do that. Remember to wedge instead of poke. For step three, you need to roll two slabs of clay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to be rolling a slab. For this project, we need two slabs. So I am placing my clay down. I've got two dowel sticks that are the same thickness so that my slab is the same thickness all the way throughout. And I'm going to use my roller and I'm going to start rolling. And I'm going to make sure I roll in all four directions. I have now rolled two slabs. I've got one big one because I need to make sure that my big plate is going to fit onto that. And then I've got a thinner one which I'm going to be using for the giraffe's neck. Step four. Let's build the body of our giraffe. Place the dinner plate on your larger slab. Use your clay pen or a kebab stick to cut the clay all along the plate's edge. Make sure you save the clay that you cut off. We now have a clay pizza. So we have to build an armature. Now an armature is just a fancy word for the structure that is inside your sculpture. Now there are various reasons to use an armature. One is to strengthen your clay, um, your structure on the inside while it dries, but another one is to save on clay. So the body of the giraffe is quite big and we don't want to use a, like a whole massive ball of clay. We only want to use, you know, as much clay as we need. So we're going to fill the inside of the body with paper so we don't use as much clay. So to create my armature for the inside of the body, I'm going to be using newsprint and I'm going to bundle this up together to create a structure and then I'm going to wrap a paper towel which is softer around the newsprint. Super important, do not scrunch this ball too tight. The reason is air dry clay almost loses 30% of its volume when it dries because it loses the water that's inside the clay. So if this is like a tight, 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 tight ball, there's no movement for the clay while it dries and then it cracks. So it's super important to just have a squishy ball, okay, not a very, very hard ball. Now the reason that I am going to put paper towel around this, this is just a trick that I have found very helpful, is the paper towel, when the clay is drying, it really helps absorb the extra water from the clay. So I'm just going to put um, two layers of paper towel and just make sure it's bouncy. When we put this circle around this ball, we're going to have too much clay. So the trick is you've got to treat this like a pizza. So we're going to cut just thin slices. I'm just going to remove three little 
tiny wedges, not massive pieces, just to make sure I can fold this around. Very important. Whenever we join clay, we need to join it with clay glue. I call this clay glue, but the correct term is slip. So here I've made slip. I've just added water to my clay, quite a lot of water, and it's very, very flowy, like mud, right? Very important, whenever we join clay, we want to get rid of the air. Remember, the air is the enemy of clay. So we have to scratch, 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 and then we add the clay glue. You will notice some cracks and imperfections on your clay ball. Don't worry about it. Use a damp sponge to smooth out the cracks. Step five, let's start building the neck. I've made an armature for the neck. So basically what this is, it's newspaper print that I've rolled up and taped together. Here's my second slab now. I've planned this slab so that the length can cover my roll. First up, we're gonna put just some paper towel around my neck, same principle applies. We want it quite loose so that it can absorb the water and prevent cracking for my giraffe. So it's very loose. So same principle applied. We're going to join clay, so we're going to scrape and slip. Step six. We now need to create the basic shapes for the head. Clay is very much like drawing. We use five basic shapes to construct a drawing when we draw. And the same happens when we do clay. Here you can see how I have simplified the giraffe's head into basic shapes. You will need the head, two horns, two ears, two eyes. When making your basic shapes, always consider your proportions. Are they all the correct size? Step 7. We are going to refine and join the basic shapes of the head together. I am going to start by joining the little horns. I am refining them by creating the little bobbles at the top. I am doing this by simply rolling them between my fingers before I join them with scraping and slip. Now I am shaping the ears. The ear is basically the shape of a raindrop. Once you have shaped them, scrape and add slip to join them to the sides of the head. Step 8. Let's add the facial expressions. This is the best part of creating a sculpture, developing the character. Think of their backstory, what's their favourite colour, who do they like to play with, what is their favourite drink, where do they hang out. I have decided to call him Gregory the Giraffe. I am opening up the mouth slightly because giraffes really have funny lips and tongues. Now I'm adding the eyeballs into the sockets. They're just two tiny balls. First I scrape and then I add slip. Now let's create eyelids to place over the balls of the eyes. Also remember to join them by scraping and adding slip. Did you know that giraffes are the tallest living land animal? And did you realize that there are nine different subspecies of giraffes? They weigh up to 800 kilograms and it takes a mommy giraffe 15 months to make a baby. Humans only have nine months. Step nine, let's join all the elements together. I'm basically just checking how I'm gonna do this and I need two little snakes. So I've wedged my excess clay, just added a tiny bit of water to get it malleable again. And I'm just gonna make a little snake 
I'm going to be needing one snake for the bottom of the neck and one snake for the top of the neck. I need to cut off um, a piece at the bottom here. I now am going to mark out where my neck is going to be. Your neck is not going to be smack bang in the middle. Okay, that's a bit weird. Your neck is just going to be to the side. So this is like the giraffe's butt. We're making quite a contemporary giraffe. So it is a bit of a cartoony style. When I join my neck to the body, I am scraping and joining with slip, but then I'm also adding and wrapping the coil, the clay worm that I rolled around the neck and then working that in to make sure the neck is securely joined. I will repeat this process using the other coil at the top when I join the head to the neck. Step 10. Let's add the little feet. First roll four little balls for the feet. I'm giving him short little legs, which is a nice contrast to his long neck. Step 11. Let's add a tail. You can make a tail more dynamic by adding a bit of a wobble or a curl. It adds to the character's personality. I like adding movements to my sculpture. Step 12. Let's finish well. The last step is always the most important and this is to ensure that your sculpture has a beautiful smooth finish. Use a damp cloth or a damp brush to smooth out all the little imperfections. This will save you a lot of time once your sculpture is dry. I'm now going to show you how to store little bread. It's very important with air dry clay that your clay dries slowly over a week. So you really want it to be slow in the beginning for the first three days and slowly loses moisture so that it doesn't crack. So we basically want to cover this guy in plastic and make sure nothing breaks or happens to him. And then after three days, we'll take off the plastic, let some air flow into the cupboard, and then eventually the last day, you can put it out into a normal room uh, to dry completely. Never ever let your air dry clay dry directly in the sun. We are not removing the armature from the structure. We're actually leaving the armature inside the sculpture, and that's completely fine. Um, some sculptures, we actually remove the armature after it's dried or on the third day before it does its final step of drying. We are not going to do this here. That's why we added the paper towel so there's enough movement uh, for the drying process. That's it for today's project on making Gregory the Giraffe. Please stay tuned for the next video when I show you how to finish him off, paint him and seal him so he is ready to be displayed as a beautiful decor piece in your house. I'm artist Lillian Gray. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like, subscribe and drop us a comment down below. It really helps us to develop our YouTube channel and to create more awesome content for you. Until next time.